Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Capacity Masterclass. If you are here, please hop in the comments and say hello and let me know that you're here. It might take a second or two uh, for the video to, to pop up. Um, I'm going to give everyone a couple seconds to hop on, get comfy cozy. This is going to be me talking today. There's not going to be a presentation or a slideshow. Really just kind of sit down, even walk, do whatever you need to do. Just be present with me today. Hello, Victoria. Hello, Kristen. Hello, Holly. Diana, good morning. Okay, let me just pull up my notes over here really quickly. If it's your first time here, um, I would love to know if you are a brand new fresh meat in here, please let me know. If you are a veteran in the group, I would love to know as well. Hello, Chelsea. Hello, Brenly. Hello, hello. Um, let me know if you're new, if you have been in any of my other um, live containers before. We have a lot of fun. Um, and this conversation is going to be a little bit more deeper. Uh, we're going to get a few giggles out of, out of this live as well as we always do. Uh, but this conversation, what I was noticing in the industry too and like why... I put this masterclass together is first of all what I was noticing was my own habits so my own habits in my business that were able to that I was able to expand my capacity but the the whole conversation really dawned on me because I don't know about you guys but if you are noticing everyone is burnt the fuck out <laughs> everyone is exhausted we are tired. I feel like there's just a lot happening in the world. We have a lot happening in our businesses. We have a lot of hats that we, we need to we need to carry in our businesses, right? Um, all the different hats, our businesses that, that we that we hold and we carry, they hold different energies and different weights. And when we are able to balance and shift certain things in our business it can take immense strain off of us it's almost like uh, i think of like scales like if i had like four scales in front of me i i always think of like balancing different things like on my scale so like okay the scale like it's the weight is too much like i need to put it over here and you kind of almost do like a little shuffle board situation but this takes time and it takes self-awareness to clock those things um many of us always feel like we have to do more right in in order to achieve more in order to grow more and i'm, I'm gonna be the first one um, i used to believe the same thing and do not get me wrong there's going to be times in your periods uh, periods there's going to be time and periods in your business that you're gonna have to grind and it's not fun. <laughs> uh, there's going to be times in your business where your business will test you and then some. Because honestly, like if, if you don't have the capacity to hold it, what good is attempting to reach 20k months if holding two clients right now seems like you are doing the Lord's work? What good is wanting more people in your group programs if having three is stressing you the hell out? Right? What well, good is wanting all the things and having the strategy, but not the capacity to hold it? Because I'm safely going to say a lot of you in here, you know what you're doing, right? You, you know, you understand business foundations. You understand what you need to do. You have the strategies in place. You probably know how to scale. Um, you know how to grow. You know how to do the work. Like, I, I think all of you in here, you know how to do the work. Um, Work has been ingrained in us, right? Like since we're knee high, you have to work for the things that you desire. But more work doesn't always equate to a rich outcome, does it now? Would it? We would have it all, right? Wouldn't all the hardworking people have everything that they wanted more? I'm sure you can all raise your hands as you know people in your life that work their asses off. I'm, I'm going to be the first one to say that I work my ass off, right? I know that you work your ass off too. And some people that work their ass off, they can still barely, you know, scrape by. They barely make it. The goal with this masterclass 
is to be able to handle things easier for the same problems that come up. And we're going to kind of get into business and what it would look like where you can strengthen your capacity, where you have bottlenecks in your business, and really just how to like move and like transcend past that and just really build the level of self-awareness that you are going to need in order to build the capacity in your business, okay? Um, you're, uh, I'm just checking back in with the comments. Uh, it's my first time, Diana. I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, Brandly, yeah, it's like first time too. And Kristen, been to a class before. Thank you for coming back. This means so much. So, in order to gauge your capacity, you need to be self-aware first and foremost. So, what does that even look like? When you can self-assess, you can also see where you can either do more or take a step back. When you can self-assess, what do I need? The question that I'm always asking myself, what do I need right now? Why am I a little frazzled mess? Like, what can I do right this given second that is going to take the stress load off? But if I don't have the self-awareness, I'm not going to be able to ask those questions. So the first question that I always ask myself what what do I need right now? When whenever you are in a stressful situation, in a in a stressful moment, clients are pissing you off, people are canceling, maybe somebody didn't show up for you. It doesn't matter what it is. First thing, what do I need? What do I need in order for me to first of all chill out, be able to take a step back and reassess? Because I know you know nothing good ever comes from being in a reactive state. Nothing good ever comes from being in a reactive state. So let me give you an example of when I when I say self-awareness and when I say capacity, what that could look like. So a little inner dialogue. I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> let me know if you talk to yourself a lot too, because I do. Uh, I am my own best friend. Obviously, like I have people in my life and stuff, but the, the person that's going to make the wheels move for you, it, it's going to be you. So... In a dialogue, an example, the other day, I woke up exhausted. I slept like garbage. It was like two or three days before my period, normal occurrence for me. My, my body almost like resets every time it's, every time it's the time of the month. I woke up angry. Like, you know, just when you wake up on the wrong side of the bed and you're like, here we go. Today's just one of those days. Like Sunny looked at me wrong and I was ready to brawl. I had to take a step back and ask myself, okay, I'm pissed off. Absolutely nothing is really working right now. I'm exhausted. I don't want to do shit, if I'm being honest. But self-awareness kicks in and it's like, okay, you're angry, you're pissed off, but what can you do right now to alleviate some stress? What would that look like for you? Walk, 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 walk. You guys know I, I walk religiously every single morning two to three miles. Even if I'm angry, even if I'm upset, even if I'm crying, even whatever, like that is my ritual, my morning routine that I will not break for anything, even if I'm pissed off, even if the world is fucking crashing down. So I knew that I needed to go and clear my head. I, I needed to walk. Like I just needed to move my body. Old Carol would have stayed in bed. Would have this been me a year ago? I'm like a whole different person even from six months ago. But a year ago, I've been like, fuck this. Today's garbage. This sucks. I'm just, you know what? I'm going to just do it tomorrow. Guess what happens tomorrow? <laughs> I'm going to be even more angry because my to-do list is a mile long. Because I didn't do any of the things that I was supposed to do yesterday. Right? So what can I knock off that list that won't kill me? That's where my capacity was at that day. You're always going to reach different levels of capacity in your business. You're, you're going to notice the more that you grow, the more that you evolve, the more that you put yourself in the hard knock life, if you shall, situations, the more that you're going to start noticing that your capacity gets higher and higher and higher and higher. Remember in the beginning when you started your business? When you had a bad review? client wasn't happy, you basically had a meltdown over it. I know I did when I was in, in the service industry, when I was lashing full time, and especially in the beginning, 
Um, my first review, like bad review, bad feedback, I bawled my eyes out. Bawled my eyes out. That's it. Life is over. I'm going to quit lashing. I'm just going to go work at a grocery store. It's fine. All is well. Two years in, I'm sure the story is a lot different for you. Right? You can handle bad reviews. You can handle negative feedback. Why? Because you learn your lesson the first time around, the second time around, right? You understand why why certain people are not happy. You understood what you needed to do in order for your client to be happy now, okay? So kind of going back to my story, that's where my capacity was at that day. I was angry, I didn't want to do anything. I, I, I still wanted to feel accomplished. So I, I still knocked a few things off my to-do list. I took a little nap I woke up and I was in a much better mood knock three more things off my list, and I called it a day. Okay? I knew that I was going to be even angrier tomorrow. So, self-awareness kicked in. Let me do something. Something is always going to be better than nothing. Always, always, always. So I still showed up, and I showed out. So... Awareness, I, I think that the one thing that I have been able to instill in my business and why I think I am able to move at a pace that I do is I've been able to instill awareness that every action has a consequence. Like I, that's like part of my core personality now. I understand like if there's certain things that I know that I need to do and I don't do it. I'm going to be so angry with myself. How often have you done this? And it could be in any other different scenario. Maybe if you have a a salon or a studio or something, you're like, I'm going to clean tomorrow. You get to the studio the next morning and you're pissed off that you didn't clean it last night when you left. I I tell you, uh, if if it's your first time here, and uh, I I say the story a lot in other of my master classes too, but I always talk about just the the self-accountability. I used to be a slob. I'm totally going to be honest. I'm messy, not dirty by any means. Uh, I am messy. Um, I wouldn't make my bed. My clothes would be all over the place. And the one thing, and honestly, like I don't really care about my bedroom that much, um, I still don't make my bed, by the way. I don't really believe in like the fact that you have to make your bed and like do that the first thing in the morning. That's not really like who I am. But um, I do put my clothes away every time they come out of the dryer. Every time, like now that I do dishes, I put dishes in the dishwasher. I don't leave them in the sink. Because for the longest time, I used to always be so annoyed and upset every morning that I woke up and I seen dirty dishes in my sink. Because I was a little lazy pumpkin the night before, and I was like, I'll do it tomorrow. Okay? Half of the things that we need to do often, we don't want to, but it leads us to the result that we desire. But you need to decipher where you're at that day. And, like, this is why, too, I don't feel like every every season, every day, like, every, every season of your business, like, you need to go balls to the wall. There's going to be certain times and certain seasons in your business where you're not going to be able to do that much. Your 100% is going to look different every single day. I'm going to say that again. Your 100% is going to look different every single day. A lot of the times we put ourselves on this like insane pedestal or this like these insane expectations, whether it's your family, whether it's your spouse, whether it's the industry, whether it's like your own goals and dreams that we end up in in the burnout cycle, right? But the truth is your, your ability to clock yourself and move yourself accordingly is where your ability, your ability to handle more comes from. Right? So next time you want to put things off, ask yourself, what will the result be? What can I do that it's just not going to suck like as much tomorrow? Okay. When I think of capacity, I, I told you like little scales. Let me give you another, uh, another way that I view capacity just like in business and in general. 
cool blue soap bubbles when you were a child. I'm sure you either went to the park, parties, whatever. You had either like those like big soap bubble things or like you had even like the, the really tiny ones. Like drop in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. If you blew soap bubbles as a child, I need to know. Let me know in the comments. Um, I'm gonna come and check in over here. Leslie says, love this, so simple to do, but we override our intuition all the time. So easy when you put your business first and then, yeah, 100%. Yes, exactly. Who blew soap bubbles? I must know. I know that I'm not the only one, but I would love to know just for like a visual reference. Sometimes the comments take a little bit to, um, pull through Victoria me <laughs> okay cool so when you were younger you were at the park and you blew soap bubbles and some of them were amazing some of the soap bubbles were amazing they were huge and you're so fucking excited and you're like wow we and the others you got so frustrated and you blew way too hard spit and all and the bubble broke I can't tell you how many times I was pissed off and angry. I'm like, oh my God. Like, what do I need to do? So you keep blowing harder. You keep, you know, like you just, you're like frustrated. Like when you're a child, you're like, huh? Ah, like, why is it not working? However, in the comments, Laura, Leslie, everyone. Okay. So you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Vanessa still blow bubbles. I fucking love this. Um, I don't know. It's just like such a fun, soothing, like thing to do. Like if I'm ever at a party and there's, like soap bubbles I'm fucking there anywho over time you learned that you need patience when it came to soap bubbles even breath and just the right consistency to get those bubbles huge and like a little help from the wind gods wouldn't hurt either capacity is kind of like that in the beginning it's small and as you grow, as you learn, and as you learn to handle your emotions, you act more on rationale than you act on your emotion. And you notice you get ahead a lot smoother with less stress. But sometimes we notice the same scenarios come up over, over, and over again. Why? So let me... Uh, there is like something that I, what I started to like notice within myself and just being an introspective person and like really just always like digging deeper. I call it like uh, the, the three stages of a breakdown model. When we like, we go from, from here to like, I can't do this anymore. So we have a disappointment. We have disillusionment, and then we have, um, I, I would say, like a, a better, more promising situation. So there's like three stages normally to a breakdown model. And I'm gonna give you an example story. We're gonna name her Dakota. I really like that name. If I ever have children and a girl, I would name her Dakota. I really like that name. Anywho, example story of Dakota and what a breakdown model in her business will look like that a lot of you are gonna be able to get behind. So Dakota just started a new business and she's so excited. She's been waiting for this opportunity and she cannot wait to start. A few weeks in, she quickly realizes that, that the new venture is a lot harder than what she thought. And her past experience might not be enough to equip her on this new journey. So disappointment kicks in. Dakota pushes through. She tries even harder. She goes all out. She just keeps on doing and doing and doing. And it just gets worse. So Dakota's like, what the fuck is going on? Disillusionment kicks in. I should just have stayed at my other job. Why did he even think I could do something like this? Could I go back and save face? Well, at least I tried. Well, at least I tried. How many of us have said that? But we gave up. The first, the, the first round that it got really hard. So Dakota starts talking with her friends and it slips out that she's going to take a step back. And then she tells her boyfriend. 
And then she like tells her family, oh, it just like isn't the right time right now. It just like really isn't the right thing to do. Like now, like it's just like, now is not the time. Dakota believes she is a victim. And then you have the final stage, the, the more promising situation, the greener pastures. Going maybe back to her old job, going back to the old way that she was doing things. It looks better. Because you already know what is waiting for you. It tastes better. It feels better. Feels safe. Always feels safe. That's why people in the final stage of a breakdown, the, the breakdown model, if you will, compromise all the dreams and goals and desires. The true problem is that it's not that Dakota couldn't do it. It's not that Dakota, like, is some garbage at this new venture. That's not true. The problem is that she hasn't built up her capacity enough to handle the stressful experiences of life or handle the stressful experience of her new job. And I see this with other business owners too. They try something new, they ultimately end up backing out because the stress is too much. Not because their dreams and desires are wrong, but they just can't handle it. And like the problem when we backpedal from our dreams, our goals, in the moment it feels awesome. It feels easier. It's almost like you're working at an overqualified job. But then you still have your like dreams nagging, like you should be doing this, like I really want to do that. Like it's in the back of your mind that you know that you're meant for more, you know that you want to do more, you know that you want to be more, you know that you have the, the, the voice, you have the thing, you have the it sauce. But we do this vicious loop. So different areas of business and where to actually build capacity and what that would look like. The first thing that I would love to, if you guys want to journal in this, you maybe even want to write it down. I know that you, I just said to be present, but do you know what drains you versus what fulfills you in your business? We, we're doing a bird's eye view in business. What are some things in your business right now that you're like, holy hell, if I have to do this any fucking longer, <laughs> all hell is gonna break loose. And what are other things in your business that fulfills you? You're like, yes, like this is it. Like, I love this part of my business. This is amazing. You can set up your business model in a way that supports you at all stages, and it's a lot easier to scale. It's a lot easier to, to, to build on that. So let's say, like, for, for example, um, I'm going to just give you a few examples of, like, how maybe you run your group containers, how you run your private containers, like, maybe just when it comes to doing activities in your business, um, and just like in the overall like business and what is happening. And also to um, side note, I'm gonna go through all the questions that you guys had at the end of our, uh, our live and we're gonna kind of like dive into that and I'm gonna give you guys some feedback. So how you run your private containers. If you guys do any private coaching, private mentorship, private calls, even if you do like maybe um, uh, one-on-one like training, anything like that. Usually the bottleneck is that there's too many calls. People not showing up for calls, time lost, the frustration, not enough time to take on more clients if desired. You have to be physical at your computer if you use Zoom, right? So that's like the bottleneck, right? Too many calls, like you just, you can't like do any more, like you cannot add any more calls, you cannot help any more people and you're like capped out. That's where your capacity is at. Solution is going to be changing your structure. What takes the most time? A lot of the times what I see people doing is they're having the same conversations over and over and over again with different people. Instead of making it into a masterclass or a course that people can take and then come to you for private mentorship. Or maybe if it's calls, if calls are too much, like let's just say if you do private containers, can you remove calls entirely and use Voxer or Slack? That's literally what I did. I was tired of hopping on calls. Like I just, I didn't want to be on my computer. I really wanted a way to integrate my, my, my work, my life, my business. Like I wanted it to be intertwined with who I am and how I work. That was a really big thing for me. So I got rid of calls and people love it. 
nobody really likes showing up for calls um, unless it's like a, a training and education and like something like this I think that's a lot different but um, when it comes to just like private uh, coaching like sometimes calls just pe people felt really pressured and people didn't like it another bottleneck could be how you run your programs if you have um, Maybe just like different things in your business. Um, one thing that I really see big is not enough time to run more than one program or masterclass at a time. Like you just feel like you can do one thing only. Um, something that I am actually implementing moving forward as well. Um, instead of doing all live, like all like live group programs, you can do a hyper program where you can drop modules, like pre-recorded modules, but you drop it as a call. So you're hands-on, obviously in the group, you still are giving feedback, you're still helping, you're still present, like everyone is getting what they need, but it takes a little bit less of you. So you can have like you be able to do other parts in your business that doesn't take two to five hours out of your week. Okay, uh, something else too, it could be planning out your group programs three months in advance. What would that look like? Maybe you feel like you need to have slideshows for every program. I know when I first started, I felt like I had to do Canva slideshows for every program and it made me not want to do online education at all. I'm a lot better when I have just like notes in front of me, like in, in a Google Doc, and like I'm able to riff on topics and like riff on um, thoughts and things like that. Like that's where I shine as a, as a mentor, as, a, as an educator, and like as a coach. But I've seen so many people doing like always a Canva like slide presentations. And I'm like, oh my God, like I have to do that too. If I don't do that, then like maybe like my course is not valuable. That's garbage. People are there for the knowledge. And obviously there's going to be certain things, certain programs where you're going to have to um, have uh, some sort of a presentation. Like if you're explaining like maybe like two Instagram profiles like side by side, like yeah, you're going to need a presentation for that. But not every program is going to need like a, a Canva presentation. Like you can literally just show up and what I'm doing currently. That felt really like fun for me. I'm like, oh my God, like I love online education again. Okay. Capacity is a game of trading things in and out of different seasons. Every life. And what you need in order to be fulfilled. So that self-awareness piece comes in. Maybe another thing is how you create content. Do you guys, um, do you like creating content? Do you not like creating content? Do you feel like content is hot, stinky garbage? Like, where are we at with that? Do you, if you guys want to drop in the comments, um, I'm going to just bring, you know, like a, a random example. Do we love content? Do we hate content? Is it, is it making sense? Like, how are you guys feeling? Let's, I'm going to just check in. Uh, what that is what that is looking like. I'm just checking in content feels Laura says struggle boast Victoria says I love creating co content Chelsea says hot stinky garbage <laughs> Hot stinky garbage is just like my favorite uh, favorite word Megan says it's a love hate Megan you want to tell me why why is it a love hate would love to know so for the ones that hate it for the ones that it's a struggle bus for the ones that it's a hot stinky garbage the bottleneck is that it's hard. You feel like it takes forever. You can never get anything fucking right. And you just feel like it's like a hot, stinky garbage of Canva DIY situation. Like when you post it, you're like, this doesn't even feel like me. It doesn't even look like me. I hate it. What is the first thing that's hard about it? Okay. Brilliant says struggle with content consistency, but love making things when I'm feeling passionate about a certain topic. Kristen says right now, hate. Uh, Deanna says, I want to love making content, but it seriously takes so much time. Uh, I love making content. It makes me feel so proud, but I wish I had more ideas sometimes. Leslie says, I love it, but it does drain the, the battery. Once it's done, it feels good. Megan says, it's fun when I feel like I have something to say, but when I feel rep repetitive, I hate it, LOL. I hate feeling salesy. I, okay, 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 okay. I love this. This is all really good. Okay. So, for example, if 
you feel like it drains the battery, like the first thing that I always go to, what is hard about it? So in the beginning phases of content, and I, I used to hate content too, okay? Um, you guys are not the only ones um, that used to be very much me. Now content is something that I genuinely enjoy in my business and I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I always look at content um, in my mind and the way that I have like reframed it, content equals cash. Content equals money. Content equals helping people. Content equals showing up and showing out and speaking on my own truth. Okay. Um, Gail yeah, says, yes, I wish I had more ideas. Okay. Uh, Kristen says, I just don't have ideas to put into content. Uh, Karen says, I love creating content and I hate scheduling it. Uh, interesting. You don't have to schedule it. Nope. You don't have to schedule it. They, uh, Deanna says, I want it to be more fun. Interesting. Yes, it does. Love that perspective. Okay. So content really like when it comes down to it. Um, and if you guys like need more help, I am going to be doing, uh, I'm taking like five to 10 girls on. Uh, I want to like spend two weeks with y'all. If you are interested, I, I dropped it in my, um, in my stories yesterday. Uh, spend two weeks together, really just come up with like really good content ideas, seeing where you guys are at in business, seeing where you're trying to go and what you're trying to do, and also being able to have like a solid brand behind it that actually feels like you. So if you guys are interested, um, let me know. You can like totally DM me privately. But uh, in order for you to expand your capacity when it comes to content, the one thing that I was able to do and like what I have done in my business so far is I kind of have rough templates. I have rough templates like in Canva that I have made it my own where I literally just like change the background and I have like five rotating, um, five rotating colors and colors and wow, words are hard, um, and fonts that I rotate throughout my content and everything, it very much stays the same. Um, I feel like when you try to create something original every single time, it takes a lot of brain power. Of brain power, the only thing you really need to do a lot of the times is change the background and change the color of your font. Boom, you got something new. Expand your capacity instead of having to like do like a whole new Canva, like you know, pick a thing that you can like tweak to your own colors. You can have like core solid like fifteen text posts that you can literally just change the picture and change the color of your font. Magic. Capacity whew, went just a lot higher. Instead of feeling like you have to start from scratch all the time, you can start from templates. If you completely hate it, can you hire it out? Can you hire it out? Expanding your capacity and being able to spend your time on other things in your business. Okay, it's not about less of you too, right? It, it's about the best of you when it comes to your business. And I, I think a lot of the times we feel like if we're doing less, we're like not doing enough. But it's not, it's never about the less of you, it's the best of you. That's how I view it in my brain. And only you know what that looks like, right? If we're being honest and everyone deserves the best version of you, including yourself. When you know the things that fulfill and drain you, you can like set up your business in a much smoother way that actually grows and evolves with you. Something else that I ask myself too is how do I thrive delivering what I know? How do I thrive delivering what I know? And something else too to really just like push home everything that helps me expand my capacity in in my business is a lot of what I do outside of my business as I said before so good sleep reading books nutrition taking care of myself emotionally mentally physically who I am outside of my business makes my business better who I am outside of my business makes my business better.
What are some things you can put into place that you can start protecting yourself? Bigger business, bigger boundaries. There's going to be a time where you have to stop doing the things you're currently doing in order for you to be able to take on more responsibility at a bigger capacity. That does not include replying to every DM, handling every comment, taking care of missed payments, doing everything manually. Can you? Sure. Of course you can. But then your capacity is going to stay there. Right? You are going to be the one. You're the one. You're the one that's going to be able to expand that. In order to have a breakthrough in your capacity and in like your strength of your capacity and how much you can handle, three things. Education, relationships, and habits. The story with Dakota, right? Story with Dakota, for example. She was capped. She felt like she was not adequate enough for the job. She could have taken a training that could have helped her expand her capacity. Part of it, education, right? Now she's capable of doing that and growing within that role, within that part of her business. Relationships. How many of you are trying to do all of this by yourself right now? Okay. How many of you are trying to do this on your own? Where's your support system at? Where is your support system? We need people. This is why I hire, you know, why I hire mentors, why I'm in different containers, why I have different levels of support in my business. Relationships, like strong relationships, also make us strong. But a lot of the times we just try to do it on our own. You know, of course it's going to be hard. And then you have habits. You have habits. What your habits are in your business and outside of your business is going to be a really big, like, do tell sign of how you're going to operate and how much capacity you have in order, like, it, the, the expansion that you are going to be able to have is going to depend on those three things education, relationships, mentorship, support, habits. And, like, something else, too, um, what I what I like think of is it cleaning up like leaky energy parts of my business and like different beliefs that we might hold on to. Maybe it's like the fact that your clients need you all the time. Could be a, a leaky energy cleanup. Or maybe you feel like you need to show up all the time. Or if you don't, the world will crumble. Where are you being leaky with your energy and time with clients or in your business? Activities that you're doing that are not really giving you like results that you need. Or maybe you're putting pressure on client results. We've all done that too. Client has a bad day. Oh my God, I'm a bad coach. I'm a bad mentor. Lord have mercy. I'm going to quit. Or worrying about what people are thinking of you. How much time are we spending over there? Right? I see the power in my people. I will always say this. I always see the power in my people. In my private containers, in my group containers. You guys. I don't think you're stupid. I think you're self-aware. I think you know how to ask questions. I, I know that you know how to show up. I don't worry because I believe if, uh, like, I believe that my clients will come to me if they need something. And if they don't, all is well. It's not like the something is wrong. It's not like I'm not doing enough, right? Like, all of those little things are such big energy leaks in our business that we, like, spend so much, like, mindless thought on that takes away from our business. Do you see how, like, the integral work is an absolute must? in order to lead high achieving women, in order to lead yourself, in order to lead your business. It ain't just strategy. 
Maybe even paying attention to the people that you're saying yes to. How many of you have taken on clients that you know that you shouldn't have taken on? I've made that mistake too. Are you saying yes because they're a yes, yes client, like you want to work with them? Or because money? And there will be times where you're going to need the experience. I, I want to be very like clear on this. You don't just get to like bypass bad clients also. Very important to point out. Right? There's going to be times that you need the experience and it's like huge detrimental for growth and I wholeheartedly wholeheartedly believe that's why we don't get to like bypass hard clients I have had my fair share of hard clients and I'm like holy moly this is testing my every little patience it's testing every like every one of my limits it's just like testing me as a coach as a business owner as a mentor we need the lessons but if every client is hard there's a deeper issue Radical responsibility is the gateway to more capacity. Radical responsibility is the gateway to more capacity. I wholeheartedly believe that. I'm going to go into the comments. I'm going to see what you guys said yesterday. Let me pull it up. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. That was that was it for the for the presentation, if you will. Um, da, da, da. Luminary. I'm going to pull up the questions. Okay. Perfect. Let's do more answers. Okay. Megan says, definitely feel stuck. I think there, I think it's less that my offer isn't amazing. It is, of course it is. It's you, of course it is. I just feel like I'm not selling it well enough. Megan, if you're here, I would love to, like, do you want to clarify on that a little bit? I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. The online space takes time. Selling takes time. The first six months of my business, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to shake my head. <laughs> just going to shake my head. <laughs> It was hard selling. There's going to be times and periods in your business where things are going to be hard. And I'm not even going to sugarcoat it and tell you like this strategy is going to be like the it sauce for you. There's going to be certain lessons that you are going to have to go through in your business in order to understand what you need to do. I can teach you all the things I can teach you strategy. I can literally show you step by step of what I do. But the time and like timing of the universe, of the land, of the divine, it takes time. It depends on how hot your audience is. It depends on if you have the content to support it. It depends on how long you have been selling something. There's a lot of factors that go into making money online. It took me two years. Two years to have enough courage and enough balls to quit lashing and jump into the online space. You don't get to bypass it. And I know sometimes it seems like some people in it, like your peers, your the people that you look up to, the people that you follow, you're like, how are they doing it? How are they doing it? How? Every person that I know that is incredibly successful. It's usually year seven to 10 that they make it. Just put that into perspective. 
right? Like this shit takes time. And I, I want you, like, I want you to understand that that is totally okay. But of course, you're going to need the systems and things to support you, Megan, uh, when it comes to just like selling it and selling well enough. Um, if you need more support with that, I'd be more than happy to help you. I have a masterclass on this. There's a program coming out on this where we like really like dive deep and like I can walk you through it and give you more support. Uh, more than happy to do that. Maria says, I feel like just with two clients, I'm already exhausted, but I need four to six to reach my financial goals. So we love doing this. We obviously, we have financial goals. We all have bills to pay. So uh, Maria, so I know that you, um, Maria is like incredible with, with branding and just like a visual creative in general. Is there some things, Maria, that you can do for your clients that they can do beforehand that they work with you that doesn't require hands-on from you? Is there templates and things that they can follow through, like that they can do some of the legwork? So when you do start working together, some things are already taken care of so you can take on more, right? So it could look something like that. Bradley says, I get feeling stuck knowing where to prioritize, especially when it comes to socials and selling, juggling my service-based business, lashing along with teaching and trying to sell my courses, plus trying to stay consistent in socials, plus trying to be present in relationships in, in my personal life. I f it feels like I'm only ever fully showing up in one area and, when, and then feeling guilty for like neglecting the rest. So once again, right? So coming kind of uh, back to like the whole capacity thing. Coming back to the whole capacity thing of how much you can handle. There's going to be certain things that are going to take a back seat, right? So like having the self-awareness of like, okay, like I know that this is going to take a back seat right now. And in three months, when I get this situated, whatever it is, I know that I can give more effort on this part of my business. Right? So yes, you're going to have different parts and different portions like in your business and in your life where you're not going to be able to give 100% all the time. But feeling guilty never gets us anywhere. We just do what we can with what we have at that time. And like asking the, the honest question from yourself, what do I need right this given moment? Okay. Holly says, I'm... Um, I'm hitting max capacity with my lash business. My heart is not in offering in-person services and trainings anymore. And the lash industry is giving me the ache. I don't know if it's because I'm overstayed my welcome doing services eight plus years or if it's just too small of a box that I've kept myself in. I feel drained physically, emotionally, and if, if I see one more post and clean your lashes, I'm going to lose my mind. I love your journey to online money, honey course. I'm uh, currently working on my offer so I can step away from in-person services and courses and transition to an online format. But the ultimate goal is to continue with the lessons I learned from Journey to Online Money Honey, but expand my brand and create wider audience with new interests, beauty, wellness, and travel. My capacity is being afraid to make the transition to the exit, uh, make the transition to exit la lash industry completely and present other offers that don't apply to the lash industry, even though that is what my business is built around. Let me like read that in my brain. So you are essentially scared of making the transition or like the exit out of the lash industry. You have time. Okay? You have time. You have time. You can start implementing all of these things right now and being smart with when you are going to exit. Like I said, I... Honestly, like my heart was not in lashes for the two years, like the last two years, my heart was not in it. Was not in it, but I stuck it out and I, I did other things. And also to uh, like really just going back to the whole audience piece, right? Like how, how hot is your audience? What can you do right now to build that, to build your personal brand, to build your presence, to build who you are and start showing up every single day and doing that? Half of them, I'm, I'm safely going to say this too, half of the reason, like or half the people that are here, you guys have probably been following me for some time. Imagine if I only showed up once a week. Half of you wouldn't even be here. 
You probably wouldn't even know who I am, <laughs> if if I'm being honest, right? You wouldn't even know who I am. So all of all of it takes time. But start doing it now. So then you do have a leg to stand on when it is time to call it quits, when it's time to to move on to other things in your business. Okay? Brilliant says, we are speaking straight to my soul, Carol. It's like you pulled everything straight from my brain. Thank you for this. Of course, I'm I'm so happy that you guys are here. Like, thank you for coming. Thank you for showing up. Um, thank you for asking all the good questions and really just um, understanding that there's a lot more to business than, than it's just how to do something. The how-tos are very important, but this is this is like this is bigger uh, when you start growing and when you start moving in your business you you start realizing that there's so many different components that it takes from you to be a good business owner to to be a strong woman to show up in all other parts of your life it's a lot it's a lot i understand why people burn out and once again like i've been there too multiple times multiple times but i'm all in or all out that's just the type of person that I am. That's how I operate and I'm okay with that. I don't shame myself. I don't make it mean anything about myself. If I'm burnt out, I'm burnt out. Okay, take a fucking step back. What do we need? Reassess and go again. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. Okay? Uh, Leslie says, side note, the nerdy me is curious on what books you have behind you. LOL, I want to check them out. What I'm going to do is I'll take a picture um, of of like the books that I have and I'll just post them in the group. So obviously you notice and I'm going to end the video off with this. I created a Facebook group, the Luminarypreneur community. I didn't name it capacity or anything like that. Um, the group is actually going to close in three days. I didn't realize that it like takes three days to like make it private. I just figured that out trying to make it private before we went live. So people are probably still going to trickle in and like that's totally fine. Um, I wanted to... The, the one thing that I, it, words, the one thing that I felt that has been like missing for me right now, currently, and like something that I am working towards is community. I feel like my business is missing the community factor. So that's why I put the, the, the Facebook group together. Like I know some of you might be new to the Facebook group. I know that some of you might not hang out in the Facebook group and honestly, it's totally okay. But I wanted this to be a safe space where I can share my thoughts, where I can share things coming up, where you guys can ask questions, where like you need anything. And I think I'm also going to do uh, for like the people in the group, I'm probably going to do like 15 or 20 percent off of all of my offers and really just like create something of this. I don't know what the something is yet. I, I don't know. I don't have the answers. All I know is I want to support, I want to be there for you, I want to help you in your journey, I, I want to like be there with you and walk with you and be in the in the trenches with you, if you will. And like not just always like through you know, like through courses and stuff. I I want to just really like plug in more and I figured that the Facebook community is gonna be the, the perfect place for it. So if you guys are maybe part of other like Facebook communities and you like certain things, I would love any feedback. Uh, but that's kind of the whole the whole mission behind this. It obviously is going to be private, um, and you guys can ask questions. You can hop in. I'm gonna just like share things throughout weeks, different things that are coming up. If you want to partake, amazing. If you don't, whatever. Um, but really, just to have a have a safe space to express yourself, to show up and get support. So. Thank you guys so much for coming. I appreciate you all so, so much. I hope that you have the best Thursday ever. And I will see you guys in another class.